Hello, my name is Robin Abel, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about what happened to my daughter so you understand why it's so important to secure your load, and to ask for your support in national legislation. I have found from the beginning that if I told my personal story, and it was from the heart, that people would listen. So I'll tell you a couple minutes of what happened to Maria. On February 22nd, 2004, I got the call that's every parent's worst nightmare. It was Harborview Hospital, and this woman said to me, is your daughter Murray Federici? It was the only time in my life I ever wanted to say no, not my daughter, not Harborview. But I said yes, and she said, she's in critical condition, you need to get her as soon as you can. I got my Volkswagen and headed down to the freeway, and I had just made the entrance onto 405 when I looked off to the left, and there was Maria's black Jeep Liberty with the hole punched in where her head should have been. And I knew in that moment it was bad, and I told myself, just breathe, you can get there. I got to the hospital, and there was no one at the front desk, so I went up and said who I was. And immediately there was a flurry of activity, and out came a social worker to take me to a quiet room. When we got to the door, nobody had still told me how Maria was. So I grabbed this woman's arm, and I said, is she still alive? She said, I don't know. It was only a minute or two before two doctors came in, and what I remember the most is how clean and white their coats were. There was no blood, couldn't be that bad. And I said, can you save her? And they shook their heads, no. And I'm thinking, this can't happen. It's Harborview, it's one of the best in the world. So again, I said, can you save her? And they shook their head, no, that she was bleeding out from the center of the brain and they couldn't stop it. It was just a matter of time. So finally I looked up and I said, are you here for her organs? And they said, yes. And I thought, you know, my daughter would want to do that. She would want to save someone's life. And if I could save a parent of just one moment of what I was feeling, it would be worth everything. So we filled out the papers that night. And then I told them I had a dilemma, that there was no way I could live without saying goodbye or leave without saying goodbye to my daughter, but that I couldn't remember her without a face. And they said that they understood it had been so horrific for their own staff that they had kept her head covered with a towel. So I went in and said goodbye that night. It was really on the way home that I found out what happened to my daughter. My brother was telling me the story. He had been in the, with the medics. Maria had been driving home that night, just finished her shift at the Foghorn restaurant in Kirkland. And there was a vehicle somewhere off in the distance or in front of her that lost a piece of furniture. It was a large black entertainment center. And the piece that went through Murray's windshield that night was six feet long, two feet wide, and weighed 40 pounds. And it took away her face from below her eyebrows to her lower jaw. It was totally gone. In hearing that, I realized maybe it was better my daughter went that night. What would the quality of her life have been like? But the next morning, the phone rang again, and they said, Come back, she's still alive. Maria did survive. No one told her she was supposed to die that night. She's had seven major reconstruction surgeries. This was before a face plant was possible. And she's done an amazing recovery. But this has made me an advocate for road safety. And it's become my mission and my passion. We have since changed two laws in Washington state, one making it a crime and the other making victims eligible for crime victims compensation. But now I feel the need to make this national legislation. We can save lives. It's not only the right thing to do, but it'll save us millions of dollars in road debris cleanup. So I'm asking for your support in this legislation. And I'll leave you with a comment. Have any of you out there had a rock at your windshield? If you're nodding your head yes, then you too could have been the next victim that easily. So I ask everyone out there, be careful, secure your loads. And people will ask me, how is it I can secure my load because they're all so different? What I would say to that is, secure your load as if everyone you love is driving in the car behind you. Thank you.